Okay, so looking at the apps side by side and just being able to get a gauge for how the apps display your experience. Um, this is not exhaustive, but somebody mentioned they'd like a, just an overview. On the Garmin, you get a, basically a summary of stats that basically breaks down different aspects of the day. I like the body battery so you can reorder how they appear. The body battery just gives you that accumulation of how much stress you've been under and how it's worn your body down over time, which I find really helpful. The sleep app, it doesn't accumulate the sleep stats into a score, which doesn't make it as useful. It's just sort of static information for how much you slept, but it does have pulse ox, so you can see your oxygen level throughout the night as well as your respiration rate, and you can track it over a period of days. So when you compare that to the Polar, you have this nightly recharge and you also have the sleep. So the sleep, it assesses it in a bunch of details based on your moving averages and gives you a sleep score. A lot of really useful information, but the best part about it is not only does it just give you this breakdown of the stats, but it summarizes you know, whether it was good or bad by the sleep score itself. So you can see a weekly summary, you can go back and see your weekly stats over a period of time as well as your range of sleep. See, you know, obviously very short during the week and one long one on the weekend. So it gives useful information there, whereas on the Garmin, you know, you obviously you can see your stats over a period of time, but mostly in one day. And that's how to calculate sleep. Um, you have your calories. Here it's sort of beneficial on the Garmin. You can see your resting and your active, totaling the total summary calories. And then on the Polar, you just get this stat for the day where it just shows you your basic calories burned, whether it's done through activity or whether it's done through just overall uh, resting heart rate. I mean, you basically, you know, your your standalone calories that you would burn just being alive. Um, respiration date, you can re respiration rate you can't see throughout throughout the day. You can jump into heart rate analysis. You can see heart rate analysis by going up here. You can see how it summarized the heart rate throughout the day. So you get that similar stat when you go into the Garmin on the heart rate details. Take a second just to show. Shows you your resting and your high for the day. Um, floors, you can obviously count your stairs, which it doesn't account, account for on the Polar uh, system. Here I have it tracked to a weight scale, so that's another added benefit. You have your step goal, and you can obviously see your steps here as well. Steps 2600, steps 2800. It always comes in within a relatively reasonable similar amount, so there's no big differences there. The one thing about Polar is you'll see, and I'll show you on a workout, you just get this summary of information in this big, huge screen, whereas you get it blocked off and segmented on the Garmin system. Garmin does track your heart rate variability throughout the day, so you can see your stress. If you had a more stressful day, you get just a calculation or assessment of how much stress you were under throughout a period of time. Um, just takes a second to load some days more accurate than others. And then you can add activities, hydration. You can also see summary of past events. So we'll look at just a CrossFit workout from a few days ago. You can see a summary of the last seven days. Whereas on the Polar system, you know, you have your basic summaries. You can see over the course, you know, you can see just different stats up at the top. But um, either way, you get a summary for the day and you can go into summary for the week and it'll show you accumulation periods over time and a summary for the month, which will show you, you know, accumulation periods over a longer period of time. So it's somewhat neat to be able to see these aspects at a long range thing. You can see it similarly on the Garmin as well as you can dive in. One of the things you'll notice about the tabs though is on the Polar app, you get these basic tabs. You have activity, which is, you know, starts with just that basic summary of the day, if it'll ever go back and you just get sleep nightly recharge and training. There are some other tabs, but they don't really relate to anything that's like training and fitness development wise. Um, but on the Garmin, so we'll go back to the top, this is the basic landing page and you get your performance details. So you can go into training status. This is normally appears on the My Day at a Glance. So here's, you know, you can see training status, but you're gonna see VO2 max trends over time, training effect trends over time, like how much workout effect over a period of time. Some of these other aspects relate to running, which doesn't relate as much to CrossFit tracking, so I'm not gonna get into them, pulse ox acclimation. And then you have your health slaps, so you can help health stats, sleep, weight, calories, pulse ox, respiration. You can get into all the details of any one of these aspects over a prolonged period, prolonged period of time when you're tracking these things. You can see 
what they summarize as over a period and you can dive into a detail and then you get to the activities. So here in the activities, I just go typically into the summary of all activities and we'll just take a more true CrossFit workout, which was just a 37 minute, 10 round thing. So when you get to an activity on the Garmin system, you get this summary of the stats on the first page. I don't know why they don't put it all in one page and then you get the detailed stats on a different page. Um, when you compare that to the Polar, so you go into the training program, and so this is looking at something from last week, so you scroll back a week, and then you look back at the same workout um, on the Polar app. Now this is the chest strap, so this is the H10, because I deleted the grid X summary of stats, because the grid X did not calculate heart rate very accurately for this workout. It had me at like 128 beats per minute average, going down, um, you can't see the training zones here, but it had me at a much lower peak zone, so it was not calculating the highest level of intensity, whereas on the Garmin, you can see that it put a lot of the time in the red zone, the zone five, which obviously assesses how much strain you put on your body. You can see the training effect here. Here on the training effect, you go into the Training Load Pro and you can see it summarized it with a score of 105. So on the Garmin system, you get a zero to five on both aerobic and anaerobic. On the polar system, you get somewhat of a generic number. It's related to you know your workout fitness level, but it still is just a generic number that will fluctuate anywhere from very low to you know to high, and it tells you a score, but it doesn't give you. This is just showing you the cardio load over a period of time, but it doesn't give you like a a max out number to be able to assess if you were really pushing it. So I was really pushing in this workout. It was very difficult in this 10 round workout. Um, here you just have sort of a score. Um, when you do a workout through the watch or you have the watch paired to a chest strap and it comes up, then you won't get this gray fit fat uh, range of areas. You'll get actually all the same colors that you would get um, on a primary you know, heart rate tracking. But here you can just see the sort of summary, but this is what it shows you. It shows you a red block. If you're a runner or a biker, this red block will be like 10 pages long and just has a bunch of different stats, but they're not sort of summarized into different areas or fields. So here you can see the areas or fields in different effect, you know, different pieces. So it just sort of takes each piece and puts it into a color pattern or, you know, segmented item. So this is much easier to read. You can summarize your workout a little bit more clearly than just seeing a bunch of stats in one block screen where you have to consciously think about what you're reading on each one of the stats. Um, when you go into back to the overall workouts themselves and you go into load. So this is the last aspect we'll look at. You can see your load over time. So you can see the red is just the workouts that applied strain to your heart. The purple is how much strain accumulation you have over a period of time, and the blue is how much your overall fitness level is, taking into account the last 28 days. So you can see it was just saying I was overreaching. There was a period of time where I had to take time off because of an injury. And then the other thing that's nice about how they do the, the cardio load that I've shown in other is you can track this across time. So obviously, you know, it showed my overall strain level dropped as well as the blue line dropped, which is my fitness level, which is what they call the tolerance, how much strain you can handle because your fitness is at a certain level. So it dropped off because I had to take a little over a week off due to injury. But you can see I peaked it back up and, you know, obviously the strain is tracking back over a seven day period. But this is fantastic to be able to see what goes into a load calculation over a period of time. And that's something that Polar does really well. When you compare that to Garmin, and you have to go into um, the training status. Now this, honestly, this tab usually appears on the My Day at a Glance, and I'm not sure, obviously, you haven't worked out today, so it's just not populating today. Um, to get this to list as productive or maintaining or any of the other labels that would come with a summary of it, you have to run a couple times a week, and I typically will just run five minutes twice a week. Uh, not at a hard pace because it's got to have a VO2 max to give a baseline comparison, but here's the basic summary. So you have your VO2 max. It shows you over a period of time, you know, like trends for what your VO2 max is. I wasn't testing a Garmin in the last few weeks as much, but over 12 weeks, you can see a period of, you know, the VO2 max development. Um, the other thing is on the load. So you can see the load calculates over a period of time and you have this same seven day load, which assesses if you're in the green, if you're training optimally or not. And if I was to do another hard workout today, it would probably pop, pop me outside of the green and say I was overreaching. 
Um, the other thing that's frustrating about the Garmin system is you actually have to track it based on the device. Now, I deleted a bunch of the device after I get done testing them, but if you track a load, it just shows you the assessment of the load calculation from the singular device. Whereas the Polar, this is accumulation of a bunch of different devices, whether it was the Ignite or the Vantage V in different periods of time, just tracking different devices. It just all comes in to the same load because I'm the same human being. Whereas on the Garmin, you just get uh, segmented load based on the device use itself. It does do, you know, you can see here one thing that's nice about the 945 and the Phoenix 6 series, you can see your load scores, you can see the type of benefit that you experience from it, um, and it just continues to give you that load focus for how you're developing or what your workouts are mostly, how they're, you know, categorized mostly. But either way, that shows you, I haven't used heat acclimation because I'm not a runner, I'm more CrossFit, but you can see at least how you're developing over time, and you have to go in a few levels to be able to see your load accumulation, and it's actually more easily found on the watch, but this gives you just a basic breakdown of how the different apps um, come together, how they supply information from the course of a day, what tabs are available, and how you can see different specifics. Again, the nightly recharge, you know, the ANS recharge, which is that autonomic nervous system, but you can see just how the apps um, summarize all the details. Just to give you an idea of what the app experience would be like here, you, you can turn any of these little details on and off. You can go into the very bottom and say, edit my day and change what you see. You can see nice little summary trends over time. Um, and the Garmin is just much broader and wider of a platform, whereas the Polar is a little bit more streamlined and simple. It's not necessarily uh, lesser, it's just not as customizable. It doesn't have, you know, they don't break down the information as usefully, but um, otherwise, you know, they're just a different platform, a different experience. So you'll see your fitness, you know, your workouts throughout the week, like a training log in the training log, obviously, but then it ties in directly to the load you're experiencing itself. So basic summary and also the summary, you can see just what the stats look like when they're coming from each of the devices. So again, the Garmin, you're seeing these specific stats on the training status because we're looking at the 945. If you did the 245, some of these would be more simplified and this whole load detail would not be filled in. The Phoenix 6 has that. If you're using the you know, Garmin Forerunner 45, it doesn't have load calculation, so you won't get this, nor will you get it with the Venue or the Vivo Active 4, which is why, you know, you want to use a 245, 945, or maybe a 645. The 645 doesn't include the body battery evaluation, so I find that to be useful. But this is a summary of the two uh, apps side by side. Uh, I'm going to probably post this as its own singular video, as well as attach this to the review or the comparison of the 945 and the Grid X. Again, you can see more details on the website, crossfittracking.com. And if you like this, find it useful, please like it, as well as subscribe for more videos. We're going to be doing the final Grid X comparison or review um, in about a week. So thanks so much for following crossfittracking.com.